Welcome to College Town Talk. I'm Shan Stout with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. And I'm Jonathan Frank with Tennessee Tech University. Jonathan, today's show is all about the music and arts scene here in Cookville. I can't wait. I'm excited too. We're speaking with Tennessee Tech alumnus and local musician Andrew Buckner. He's also the editor of Cookville Lifestyle and uh, I've got to say one of the nicest people, if not the nicest person I've met since moving back here to the Cookville area. I completely agree with that. But Terry Ritter is also giving him a run for his money. She is lovely as well. I really enjoyed talking with Terry. I didn't know her before this conversation. I know you did, Shan, but it was so great to to get a chance to to sit down with her and talk and learn more about the Cookville Art Studio and Gallery, where she serves as president. It's now at the top of my list for a visit. She completely sold me on it. Uh, I think folks are going to enjoy that conversation. But up first... Our interview with Tennessee Tech alumnus, local musician, and the editor of Cook the Lifestyle, Andrew Buckner. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by the soundtrack of our show himself, the very multi-talented Andrew Buckner. Now, Andrew doesn't just perform the original music for this podcast but he writes, records, and performs his music in venues across Middle Tennessee as a sought-after guitarist and man, do you say mandolinist? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You nailed it. (laughs) I don't think I did, but you're being very kind. His latest instrumental album, Coffee in a Good Book, Volume 2, is available now wherever you stream your music. Now, Andrew is also the editor-in-chief of the popular local magazine, Cookville Lifestyle, And last, but certainly not least, he is a proud Tennessee Tech alumnus and lives locally here with his wife, Brenna. So, Andrew, uh, welcome to College Town Talk today. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Andrew, when people think about live music in our community, I know that you are one of the first names that come to mind. We've had a lot of asks from you at the Visitors Bureau, and I know that you are everywhere. But I did read that you were inspired by an Eric Clapton song to begin playing guitar. Okay, now this is the part that blows my mind. As a freshman in high school, because if anyone has ever heard you play, I can't believe you've only been playing that span of time. I figured you were one of those prodigies that started playing at like three years old. So this is completely beyond my comprehension. You also studied music at Tennessee Tech. So Andrew, when did you first realize the bond that you have with music? Well, I grew up in a in a family that was constantly exposing me to music. So I had a, a cousin who was um, in his 50s when I was a boy who was an incredible fingerstyle guitarist. My grandma was a pianist. My mom's mom was a pianist. My mom was a saxophonist. So I I grew up with all these great players, but um, it didn't, and I always loved music. I I bought a Talkboy radio and would make mixtapes for hours and hours, but it didn't translate into me being an actual musician until I was a freshman year in high school. And I heard uh, the unplugged version of Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton on the radio. And I thought, whatever that is, I have to do that thing. And um, so at that moment, my brain was lit on fire and uh and I was after a guitar from that point on and I think the first guitar that I bought was a brand name Gremlin guitar um <laughs> I'm sure that they haven't been made uh for the last 30 years but it was a really bad guitar but it was a guitar um so that song set me kind of on the path toward music and it in it uh it connected the dots from what I felt inside about music and gave it a tangible way um to come out of me from that from that point forward. Okay, Andrew, I'm glad to know this because at least I can feel in my soul that it came through your genetics <laughs> and your family line as well. So this is this is adding to your story. I, I can see it now. Well, it's it's funny if you ask my mom and dad. Um, the first year that I played guitar, I was as close to tone deaf as you can possibly be. Every string could be out of tune. I would have no, I had no pitch pitch rec- recognition whatsoever couldn't sing in tune at all played the same songs over and over and over again for hours I would be playing baseball or basketball at Monterey High School and a pitch would be about to be thrown and I would be in outfield and I'd be thinking now if I get home and I work if I get home by 8 30 I can work for an hour and a half on this 
So it had already kind of just taken over and consumed me. Um, and yeah, so it was genetic, but man, was it a struggle at first for me and for everyone that lived in my house. Well, Andrew, you obviously uh, powered through that struggle and to become a really successful musician. And now one of the musical pursuits that I know you've become involved with recently, uh, playing as their lead acoustic guitarist, is uh, the local country music duo Caleb and Leanne. And for our listeners that don't know, they are really another staple of the local live music scene. They've had some big success recently. In fact, I read that you all are playing a show with Dana Carter that's already sold out and it's not until November. So how did your work with Caleb and Leanne come about and what do you enjoy most about performing together? Well, I I was kind of at the genesis of Caleb and Leanne coming together. Um, Before the pandemic started, I was a music instructor was one of the things that I did. And one of my students was Leanne's husband, Joey. And um, I I think it was we through communication, I think probably Joey's idea, Caleb was playing separately. Um, He had started doing his own solo work and Leanne was in another band. And we thought, well, we're all the same age. They have complimentary voices. Let's just get together one night and see how it goes. So a couple of weeks later, we got together And then by that point, I was moving to Knoxville to pursue work for a videography company. So they started playing their first few shows as just the duo because that night went great. And and then for about the next year, I would travel, year and a half maybe, I would travel back and forth from Knoxville to play shows here on the weekend um, with them. And then eventually my wife and I, we put our house on the market, sold and moved back here. And I've been playing everything since. Um, uh, So it's been fun to see the growth and to see um, how much work they've put in. Um, and they're just getting better and better all the time. And yeah, we've had some cool opportunities to play some really neat shows and work with, we worked with the producer who did all of Alan Jackson's hits and did Darius Rucker and, um, Zach Brown band and all these wonderful artists. And we've got to play some really cool shows. We've got some cool shows coming up and, and, um, we've got some exciting things that we're working on. So the, the, the the best part about playing with them is getting to play around great singers. Anytime you can play around great vocalists, it's, it's a joy. Now, Andrew, apart from the fact that you're playing all this great live music and getting that energy from the crowd, you also have this release of your latest album, Coffee in a Good Book, Volume 2, which, as we mentioned in the introduction, is available right now. Now, this album is interesting. It has songs that are clearly inspired by some of our great local businesses, including a song aptly titled Soul Craft, and we can all guess what that comes from, an ode to the wonderful coffee shop on the West Side, and yeah. also a song named Glass Tangerine. I don't think it's going to take a rocket scientist to figure this one out. And that's a nod to the flower and plant shop directly across the street from Soul Craft. Can you share more with our listeners about the album and how you draw inspiration from these places that are right here in Cookville? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the whole point of that record and with the mandolin record that preceded it was to create music that was reflective, intimate, meditative, that could be enjoyed over a cup of coffee in a plant shop, in a bookstore like Plenty. Um, and practically Anna and Tyler are two of my best friends that own Soulcraft. They're incredible people. They've been so supportive of me. They've let me workshop these songs in their, in their coffee shop for the last year and a half. And then Emma Crabtree that owns Soulcraft and her husband, Seth are incredibly close to me too. And she's done the same. And, um, Emma actually did the artwork. Uh, she did the, the design for the album cover. She's helped me with so many things. Um, so and then Plenty is, there's a song on there called A Day at the Bookshop, which is a nod to Plenty as well. I really wanted to celebrate the way that those shops make people feel, myself included. Um, and I feel like those shops accomplish what I hope that those this guitar record can accomplish. I hope it can bring people a sense of peace, uh, awareness of their self, and, and uh, the time and the space to reflect. That's what those shops do for me, and I hope this record channels a little bit of that energy to the listener. Andrew, beyond uh, being such a talented musician, you're also a gifted writer. And I read that in 2022 alone, you pinned more than 495,000 words, 
with most of these coming from newsletters, blogs, and video scripts. So you've recently parlayed that talent for writing into a new role as editor-in-chief of Cookville Lifestyle, the popular local magazine that launched last year, working with the magazine's founder and publisher, Chelsea Dartes, and I've had the chance to meet with her. She's been lovely. She does great things for this community. So what made you say yes to that opportunity, and what's it like serving as the editor-in-chief for a publication right here in your hometown? Well, to answer the first part of your question, I said yes, because Chelsea is a wonderful person. Um, She's uh, an egoless, creative, uh, driven person that has shown me immense respect um, and just kindness, to be honest with you. Uh, She's allowed me to write in my voice, uh, and she celebrated that, and she's just been a big uplift to me as a writer. So I took that uh, because of Chelsea and because of the the help that she's given to me, to Caleb and Leanne and to so many other artists in town. Um, what's awesome about it is, is getting to tell stories. I mean, stories are ultimately, I, I feel like what drives me more than anything on earth. And to tell the stories of these beautiful people in our community is an added layer uh, of joy that it brings to me. And um, we're still we're growing, we're learning our cadence, we're we're learning our voice. You know, we're just now not even a full year in. Um, and this was my first edition serving as editor in chief. So I got to play a bigger role in um in the voice uh, of of the articles and in the way that the um the edition was edited. Um and it was it's just been a pleasure uh, to tell the stories of these wonderful um people. Uh, and i'm I'm grateful for the opportunity to write um in Cookville. you know i'm I'm so thankful for it. Well, Andrew, I want to I want to step on that as well. Speaking of Cookville Lifestyle, now the latest issue is on newsstands. Uh, it can be found online as well, cookvillelifestyle.com. And what can readers expect to find in this particular issue? Well, this one is really unique. This was Chelsea's idea, and I think it was a brilliant idea. Um, this one is a celebration of fairest of the fair through the years. So we have selected a winner from each decade going back to 1958 uh, with Pat uh, Comer Hall. Um, She is incredible. I may have said Pat Hall Comer. One of the two, my brain's a little short-circuited. Anyway, her name's Pat, and she's fantastic. Um, And she was our first winner, and she is our cover. So getting to tell the stories of all of these incredible women that have gone on to do amazing things, these incredible leaders, military service, I mean, We've got um, one one of our, the past winners works with the Ryman Auditorium and the Grand Old Opry now. It, it's just telling their stories and 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 relaying the way winning Ferris of the Fair made them feel, and also the comprehensive nature of the contest. That it's not just a beauty contest, and it's it's so much more. It's transformative, and lifelong friendships were made through it. Um, you know, talents were strengthened and encouraged and validated through it. So getting to tell these stories in the written word has just been such a treat and a challenge to tell the fairest of the fair story nine different ways through nine different lenses has been a real challenge for me as a writer, but I'm so grateful for it. Well, and Andrew, I'll tell you, we we have heard from so many women that have read that issue, how it's the opposite of ageism. It's celebrating every age of all these women celebrating that they are beautiful inside and out, celebrating their story. It has been such a dose of positivity and um, just such an honor to be able to to kind of uh, get into their world and, and see how that affected them. And, you know, pageants, they, they talk about it helped their confidence. Some of them became better at public speaking, just different things that that was a platform for them to build on overcoming fears and, and becoming more confident. But um, just just thank you for that and thank Chelsea because that was a, a very smart way to celebrate these women and not just be about that moment in time when say you're 18 or 20 years old and you know you had that one moment but that you know how how your life continued and that you're still beautiful. And uh, I, I just loved it. I loved it. Well, I appreciate that. It, it's been really neat from my perspective to get to interview all of these wonderful ladies and hear their the lens that they view the world through is they're all different. They're all beautiful and complex. And they all took something from their time in Ferris to the Fair. It planted some seed in them that grew into a skill or into a mindset or, or to a worldview even. Um 
just so many friendships were made through it uh, for these wonderful contestants. And they each brought a new take on it. And it changed the way that I viewed not only the fairest to the fair, but our fair board and all they do for our community. Um, so it was, it was reciprocal. It was great getting to share their journey, but it was also healing for me and made me love my community even more. Well, I, I just had a chance to read the latest issue myself, and it's so well done as always. And you can find it for free at various places around Tennessee Tech. We're a distributor partner, and I know that Shan, the Visitors Bureau, is as well, so folks can get it there. Absolutely. And be sure to check out the Nature Spotlight article because we, we submit that uh, on a seasonal basis, and that's just been our joy. Well, you've done a great job with it too. I've got to I've got to work with the last two and they've been fantastic. Well, Andrew, we have so enjoyed talking to you today. We end all of our interviews with this same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Oh, this is my favorite question you've asked so far. I I think the easiest way to distill it down is to talk about three educators at Tennessee Tech. Uh, one was Jim Lotes who was the bassoon instructor and music history teacher. One was Steve Fry, who uh, was my mentor and advisor as I finished my interdisciplinary studies bachelor's. And the third was Tom Saya, uh, who has passed away, who was my creative writing and poetry teacher. Those three men validated the seeds of art that were in me. They encouraged me to write. They encouraged me to perform. They encouraged me to think. They, they frankly taught me to be a reader um, and to question what was going on around me in a healthy way and to become more a more fully formed thinker. And I'm so grateful for them. And I never would have met them without attending Tennessee Tech University. My parents both graduated from Tennessee Tech University. My wife graduated from Tennessee Tech University. Her parents graduated from Tennessee Tech University. Um, it's just a point of pride. I'm so grateful that I got to attend uh, the university. And I'm so excited to see everything that's happening there. And And I'm just unbelievably thankful for what that what Tennessee Tech poured into my life and how it helped chart the course for my for, for what was coming for me. That is a really great tribute to Tennessee Tech. I, I feel the same way in so many ways. And uh, Andrew, thank you for being our guest today on College Town Talk. And thanks for providing the music for this podcast each week. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for using my music. It's such a treat to know that it resonated with you enough uh, to be to be something you include on this podcast. And I'm, I'm really grateful for it. And for our listeners, learn more about Andrew at andrewbucknermusic.com. Welcome back to College Town Talk. Now, you know, Jonathan, Cookville is not just Tennessee's college town. We're also an arts town thanks to people like our next guest, the wonderful and colorful Terry Ritter. Now, Terry is an abstract artist and art teacher, and she also serves as the president of the Cookville Art Studio and Gallery. Now, this was founded in 1961 by a Tennessee Tech professor. The Cookville Art Studio and Gallery features monthly exhibits and shows. They have classes, demonstrations, and critiques that are open to the public. It's a beautiful space. Now, Terry specializes in acrylic pours and alcohol inks, and I'd love to know more about that later. She is known for her bright and vibrant abstract creations and one of many ways that she brings a pop of color to our community. Terry and her husband, Skip, also own Ritter's Arts, where they sell their artwork and where you can even commission a one-of-a-kind painting from Terry or a hand-carved wood piece from Skip. Terry, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you, Shan and Jonathan, for having me as your guest today. It's my joy to be here. Well, we are thrilled to have you as well. Now, Terry, the Cookful Art Studio and Gallery is such a gem in our community and right down the street from the Visitors Bureau, so we get to spend a lot of time together. But for our listeners that don't know, you guys are open six days a week and admission is free and open to the public. Tell us what visitors can expect to find when they walk through your doors. Well, I hope that everyone who walks through the doors will be greeted warmly and have a wonderful welcome. And as they enter, they'll see our huge gallery with, as you said, a new show every month. We also have a very large studio for our classes. And we teach classes for kids, for little kids, all the way up through, well, 
older people, uh, classes for all ages. And it's just a lot of fun to come there, to look around. If people are looking for art for their walls at home, we're the place to go because all of our art's for sale. Terry, the art scene in Cookville has continued to grow on, really on your watch. I'm, I'm giving you credit there because I think you deserve it. And of course, the arts are also embraced at Tennessee Tech, where fine arts became its own full-fledged college at the university about six years ago. And according to brand new fall 2023 census numbers, the College of Fine Arts at Tech saw the largest percentage enrollment increase year over year of any college on campus. Uh, they grew at a rate of 6.4% between 2022 and 2023, and they now have well over 300 majors. So. Uh, how have you seen the art scene uh, change and evolve over over your years here in Cookville? And uh, what do you see as Tennessee Tech's role in that? Well, what I've noticed over the years is that more and more people are moving to the Upper Cumberland, not just for the great scenery and the jobs, but also for the arts. We're becoming known as a very um, outstanding art community. And I think Tennessee Tech plays a large part of that. We're raising up some wonderful students who are uh, doing great creative work and are gonna be out there creating and teaching our kids. We've been able to work with the art education majors and actually have art shows for them. So Tennessee Tech is helping the whole art program of the Upper Cumberland grow in ways that are gonna affect us for years to come. But I just, I, I'm so excited at how art is just growing and growing and growing. We have more and more galleries open. We are the largest, I will put that plug in there. We have about 1100 square feet, but I mean, almost monthly, I see new galleries opening with new, whether it's photography or sculpture or painting, um, all kinds of arts for our community. And of course, tech as I said, may, plays a major part in that. The Appalachian Crafts Center is wonderful. And that's that's a big draw to the Upper Cumberland also. Well, Terry, we appreciate all that you contribute to the arts community here across Putnam County and the Upper Cumberland. Now, your involvement and leadership, it means a great deal. But what I was shocked to learn now, we, we've been friends for a while, but I did not know this about you. I read that you actually walked away from art for about 30 years and that you rediscovered your gift within the last 15 years or so. Now, I want you to tell me more about that, but what made you step away from art for all those years? And more importantly, what made you return? Well, I think the easy answer is that life happens. Um, we get busy with our jobs. I took a job as a flight attendant and did that for 30 years. And it just wasn't um, conductive to spending time creating. I was on the road all the time. But the good part about that is I flew international. So I got to see all these wonderful museums all over the world and learn more about art. Went back to college and finished my degrees and, and studied more art. And then I decided um, to take an early retirement. And that's what got me back into art. My husband, Skip, uh, came home one day and said, here's $100 go buy some art materials. It's time for you to start painting again. So that's what got me started. And I haven't stopped since then. I started back into watercolors and then into acrylics and then into the alcohol inks and acrylic pours and found out that I'm an abstract artist and I just love it. It speaks to my soul. So that, you know, I, I see that with a lot of people and they're uh, 30s and 40s. They're just busy raising their families and working and, and art kind of, kind of takes a back seat. They don't get to do as much as they want. So we at CAS or Cookville Art Studio try to make it convenient for them to stay in art and have fun. Finally, Terry, we like to end each interview with the same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well, I think for me, it's an encouragement to see all these wonderful art students that are coming out. Um, we have a couple of them that have shown work at, and still have work hanging on our walls at the cast, and they're just gorgeous. You should come and see them, Jonathan. Um, and not only the art students, but the art education majors. As I mentioned earlier, we've done a couple of shows for them because they don't get a gallery show. And to see their talent and know that they are going out to teach our young kids from elementary through high school um, is, is just 
it's heartwarming to know that the future is going on when I'm gone. Um, art is something that speaks to everyone in different ways. And we need the young people, the college students studying it and not just studying how to do it, but learning imagination and creation. And that's what I enjoy seeing what they come up with. Some of it, I'm like, oh, that's gorgeous. Others like, I don't understand it. But that's okay. It's it's youth and they're learning and they're growing. And I just that just impacts my life in such a warm and wonderful way. Terry, thanks so much for making time for this conversation and for being our guest today on College Town Talk. It's been my pleasure. And thank you, Shan and Jonathan, for having me on. And please come by what as we call CAS and enjoy some of our beautiful artwork there. And for our listeners, you can learn more about the Cookville Art Studio and Gallery at cookvilleart.com. And you can learn more about Terry's personal artwork at rittersarts.com. We want to thank Andrew Buckner and Terry Ritter for being our guests today on College Town Talk. We sure do. And we want to thank you, our listeners, for adding this podcast to your playlist subscribing, reviewing, and sharing with all of your friends. All of these things help to spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville. Join us again next week for more conversations with leaders on and off Tennessee Tech's campus as we talk to the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.